and I was fortunate that enough that there were five British English members and there were three Indian members. And among the three Indian members, there was also my great grandfather. And my great grandfather had the fortune or misfortune of cross examining General Dyer. And because he cross examined General Dyer, General Dyer was sought to be found guilty and sent back to England. Of course, the English British government did not punish him. The question is, will those who fired on May 22nd face prosecution? You cannot have such a crime taking place. There are videos. We know the officers were fired. We possibly also know people who actually pretended to be members of the public and were actually stolen them from what the reports say. Is there going to be an impartial judicial inquiry into this incident after which we can demand prosecution if the acts were indeed found to be wrong and problematic and criminal? I think it's about time that we start demanding that prosecutions of law enforcement agencies take place. Who ordered the fire? We are seeing a pattern of repression across different states. The repression is happening against political activists, against creative persons, against dissenters, and most importantly, it's happening against people who are opposing things like land acquisition and acquisition of forests. Across different states, we are seeing this repression. And when we talk of this freezing up of passive state, and when we talk about bringing in a political alternative. I think it's very important that all of us who are advocating put these issues up front. That if we want an opposition that can really be a sustainable opposition to the fascist powers that rule Delhi just now, then we want an opposition that talk, looks at why should there be 144 in our city? Why can't we demonstrate this? Why can't we have an accountable and humane police? Even the police would probably like the fact that it gets transformed and the moment it's becoming a slave to the political master. And all of these are questions which are very, very difficult and which need to be asked. There are other three four incidents I want to bring to your attention. There's a village called Lilasi village in Sol Bhadra district of eastern Uttar Pradesh. It's about 75 kilometers from Banaras with the Prime Minister one is election forest. The Son Bhadra forest is one of our richest forest areas. It's, it's a very rich eco, eco zone. It covers five states Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, and Madhya Pradesh. It's one of our, there's a vibrant Adivasi movement here. And I'm closely involved with the All India Union of Forest Working People and the Adivasi men and women have been working to reclaim their collective lands under the forest tax act. The police repression in those regions is increasing day by day, just as we know it is increasing in Chhattisgarh and Chhattisgarh. In the last village on 19th of May, the police entered the homes of Adivasi and in 18 homes and women and children were brutally beaten. And even today as we speak, Two of our women leaders and one man leader have been wrongfully detained in the Mirza Pujri. We filed a Hindu Stoppers petition in the Alaba High Court. And the police said last week, you think this is the same, that we caught them and we released them two weeks back. We released them in violation of the village, violation of free, violation still in detention. In Kashmir, a 16 year old girl is shot. <coughs> In Jharkhand, out of 105 MOUs for companies, 85 MOUs in, uh, in international companies had to go back because of the resistance shown by Adivas. But the cost of that struggle has been 2,000 Adivas in jail. And that, unfortunately, is not a media story. So we are looking at a pattern of repression. We are looking at a pattern of Political masters misusing the law and order machinery to repress its own people. And Kitikoyan's 822 violence is part of that narrative. And therefore, I think all the people struggle in the rest of the country need to identify with the struggle from that point alone 
and ensure that whatever the Pakistan government wants, a company that is in 500 crores cannot be allowed to come back. If Sterling is allowed to come back, what is the point of the historic struggle to come in that thing? What about the health of the people living there? What about the 50,000 protesters that have been in Odisha? You must have heard the name of the Costco government. Again, a historic struggle took place in Odisha. 2007 onwards, there's been repression of a kind where they there have been false cases against 2,400 Adivas. Abai Sahu, my close comrade and friend, who is a leader in that struggle, has got 68 cases against. I am only 16. 68. And in, that, in those three villages that have resisted the Costco struggle, South Korean company finally bowed its face and said, We are not interested in that land because of the people who are. But what did the Odisha government do? They said, We are determined that the land that we possibly take the lead of the Adivasi, we will bring an Indian company there instead. So, one more fresh lot of protest, one more fresh lot of agitation. <coughs> And now we are fighting their cases in Bhubaneswar. I mean, it is pathetic how our people's movement, human rights defenders, are suffering under false and malicious responses. And I think we need to make this into a national demand that the false cases against those who are fighting for people's rights and human rights, they can take. Bhima Korina. Bhima Korina. First of January. But because there's a meeting in December in Munasi, judges attend that meeting and former Supreme Court judges. It is the Hindu family that Shamaji, Bhire, and whatever again, Chumina have obtained cases of hate speech and violence to foment trouble against the peacefully protesting Dalits who have come to commemorate their history. And it's a violent uh, attack on the person who had come to commemorate this issue. And after that, the police is not prepared, deliberately not prepared. And then there is violence, there is a fun call by Prakash Ambedkar and others. And after that, the whole narrative changes. Look at these guys protesting, doing fun, etc. They deserve what they And in the last one month, a new term has emerged in law enforcement. From Pune and Bombay to Delhi. It's called Urban Nuptials. And under the name of Urban Nuptials, the professors in Nagpur, lawyers, and others being picked up and jailed. So it is happening at a frightening level for me. This narrative will not be complete unless I also not speak about an amazing young person that has been in jail and been here for his life. Because he's been in jail since June 9th last year. Chandrasekhar Azad the chief of the Bhima. His only crime is, and that of his organization, his own, their only crime is that they set up 350 revolutionary schools in the villages of Western Uttar Pradesh, where they work with Dalits, where they work with minority Muslims, where they work with OBCs. They do not believe in exclusive identity politics. And if they teach Ambedkar and Pule, they also teach Gandhi and Marx and Azam. That is the reason. <coughs> A whole crop of young people have emerged from Western Uttar Pradesh. They start challenging the Hindu narrative. And which is why he has been incarcerated in jail. Since he died last year. 27 cases he got bail, sir. He got bail finally by November last year. 27. And the day he got the last bail, that evening, NSA was applied. That was it. There have been three extensions to the NSA. And he seriously feared for his life. 
بدین تو من حالت اندیمش میگن What did they say there? They said the time has come for speech to protest. <coughs> and for uttering those words, an FIR under 151 was not there. Whereas Milinde Koti and Shambhaji uh, uh, Bide, who got many, many hate speeches to their credit, have had no arrests and no prosecution. So the other target of the regime in Delhi is all these young leaders. Whether it is Kanaya, whether it is Kumar, whether it is Puja Shukla, whether it is Richa Singh, <coughs> whether it is Shailan And it's a matter of pride that India is throwing up such young people who despite the fact that they're young, they've got their lives ahead of them. They are taking a stand and they're taking a stand for constitutional rights for the people of India and for justice. Just last in a disgusting decision, the JNU administration has rusticated one, which means his PhD is at stake. I mean, these are the levels to which these petty minded people will go, and that is why they are fascists, and that is probably why they will also have their downfall. But we need to stand by all these little and larger struggles, because what happened in Kyoto on May 22nd, 2018 is nothing short of a complete block on Indian democracy. And I cannot believe that for 99 days before that, no member of the Tamil Nadu government or administration even visited the peaceful protesters. Did the judgment of the High Court and the subsequent judgment of the Supreme Court of 2013 mean nothing to the government in Tamil Nadu? Is that not contempt of court? My final plea always is to the judiciary. So I know the judiciary cannot be asked. There is a very powerful power of the Supreme Court. <coughs> very powerful power which is very little used. <coughs> Supreme Court once used it when they found that the Himalayas were being defecated. The Himalayas, the steam beauty of the Himalayas, there was some Coca-Cola or something being taken there. So they said our Himalayas are being desecrated. So they took so much action. Should not our High Courts and Supreme Court take so much action when people are killed with police raids, when gross injustices take place, when wrongful arrests take place, when the Adivasi system suddenly picked up in the middle of the night and taken to God knows where. Chandrasekhar Azad Ravan's petition will now go to the Supreme Court after lying in the Allahabad High Court for five months, and we don't know why it was not worth it. We need to also ask the question that the four esteemed judges asked on July 12th, 2018, that the systems within the courts also have to be made around. So that they function for people's interests, for the right to life, for the right to a life with dignity, and not simply function by law. Finally, I'll just end by saying